Welcome back to the channel, folks. Today, we're gonna to go over the most deadly technique possible for catching lake trout. Now, we're jigging for lake trout and everybody has this misconception about lake trout where you need to snap the rod a bunch of times off the bottom, pound bottom, and do all this fancy stuff. You're, you're doing things that aren't natural to the fish. So what we wanna do is mimic what bait fish actually do. So I'm gonna go over rod reel setup, sonar setup, everything possible, even the settings, most of the settings that I can show you guys uh, because I'm not running a normal traditional 2D sonar and show you the most deadly technique for jigging for lake trout. So if you guys enjoy this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button and leave a comment below if you guys learned something. So let's get right into it. So right now we're using the very expensive sonar from Garmin. We're using the LiveScope XR, so the LVS62, but I'm actually running 2D sonar on the right hand side of the screen and I'm recording it. Uh, so you guys can see it. Let's go over the, the rod real quick. I'm using a heavy fast seven six foot rod that's meant for a, almost a two ounce lure or a two ounce lure, 15 pound braid. And I'm using a bait cast so these fish are pretty big. 15 pound power pro, 20 pound uh, floral leader. And then the one ounce grub head or swim head and a six inch super glow grub tail. There's not a lot of light down there at uh, 80 feet where we're fishing. And we were fishing at 120 20 feet earlier today. And so you want to thread that grub on there just like that. And you also want to hit these with a glow light if it's not super sunny like it is today. So these things glow in the dark, bright green. And they're available on my website, which I'll leave below. So I'm going to drop down. And currently what you're seeing on the bottom right hand side of the screen there is the bottom of the screen is at 76 feet or so, right below that, that 75. And what you're gonna see on there is just small little bumps come up if a lake trout comes into frame, basically. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop down and we're gonna drop down about, I don't know, five to 10 feet from bottom. If you don't know where bottom is, you wanna make sure you see it on your sonar. And we're gonna wait till that line, so I'm the top line there, the little one that's moving up and down. We're gonna wait till that line wants to chase us like this. And we're just gonna run away from him. Uh, we chased me all the way to the surface past the thermocline. So let me talk about that here for a second. So this lake, not right here, but earlier in the lake, it was a lot of current. And what will happen, so that fish is actually chasing me down on 2D and on Live Scope Plus, which is awesome to show you guys is the lake right now is like 75 degrees on the surface or so, 72 and a half. That water will be warm for the most part all the way down until about 45 feet. Warm water will be on top, cold water will be on the bottom. Lake trout don't like warm water, so they'll try to stay below that mark. So that fish stopped right on me. And now he wants to go for another ride here. So that fish is giving up on me. So what I wanna do is drop, you can drop right to bottom if you don't know where you are. Let your line go slack and then reel it up probably five feet off bottom and we're just gonna wait. We're literally just gonna wait until a fish comes in. We're not gonna go like this. We're not gonna do any of those weird movements, snap, jig bottom as you wanna call it. This is a swim bait style, swim bait, um, like a normal paddle tail would work well as well. And I sell those on my website, the 4.75 inch. And they don't have to glow, but I've noticed that the glow matters a huge difference on how many fish you end up with at the end of the day. So right now we have two other people in the boat with me and we're at uh, 56 fish. And Wednesday we caught 111. So all pretty much on the same baits and the same technique, which is literally wait for a fish to come in and we want to run away from that fish. So a lot of bait fish, including alewives, smelt, if you see them on either underwater footage video, like I'll show you right here, they don't move very fast. They stay in the school, or if you watch any sort of National Geographic videos where there's bait fish and like a shark in the middle of them, bait fish don't swim really fast. They wanna move at a normal pace, eat plankton, eat bugs, and they only run away if they're getting chased by something. So what we wanna do is sit and wait and run away when we see a fish that's engaged and is looking at us. So right now there's, there's, no, there's one fish in the area there on the bottom. So right now I'm not seeing any fish in the area. I can pound bottom a couple of times. 
And I don't want to rip up too high because I won't be able to set my hook. So I want to reel up just a little bit and wait. Now I do see a fish in there somewhere. Nope, so we get another one coming in from our, my right shoulder basically. And on live scope, that little dot in the middle is me. And on the normal 2D sonar, that line going up and down on the bottom right is also me. We're just looking at two different types of screen. Now we just want to sit and wait for fish. We can pound bottom a little bit if we wanted to. But we don't want to, oh, see there's a line coming up to me right now on the right. We want to make that fish interact with us, not react to the fish quite yet. So he just missed us. So then I can, oh, he just booked it. Two. Oh, no, I didn't get your two. I got my two, I think. Oh, so he just one, one's coming up, chasing me right now. We want to run away from him as, and match his pace. So see how he just gave up? You want to drop right back down. So we're going to do kind of a cat and mouse game. We want that, we're the mouse, fish is the cat. We want to run away. We call out the wait and chase. Or wait and run, basically. Like I said, you can jiggle a little bit. Small little movements, and that just has the tail kick if it's a swim bait, or even the grub moves that sends vibrations out in the water. I'm gonna go over my live scope settings and my 2D settings here in a minute. I can't go over all of them, like I said, because my transducer is not uh, a traditional 2D sensor or transducer. All right, so we just made a, a micro move and you can see the bottom of the right hand side of the sonar, which is the 2D mode, is bumping up and down just a little bit. And this is not the best 2D mode there is. We want to eliminate a lot of water when we're lake trout jigging because you can literally drive around the whole lake. Right now there's a thermocline. Oh, see, now there's a fish coming right up to me. We want to run away from him as fast as possible, match his speed. So he's got a buddy that's coming up too. I'm going to drop back down to him. And run away, run away, run away, run away. And set the hook. So as soon as you feel them, that tap in that rod, you want to set that hook to the moon. They have very rigid mouths. Uh, net please, right? So just like that, that's the technique that is absolutely deadly. This is number 56 or 57 for today. There's a nice, uh, I don't know, 25, 26 inch maybe, maybe 25, probably. Going right back in. We wanna limit air exposure as much as possible out of the water from the net, water to water in under 10 seconds. Otherwise, apparently they get brain damage. Um, Lake Trout have the ability to burp on the way up so they actually expel their gases. We're not super deep right now, so I wasn't super concerned about it. So you can actually hold them at like, I don't know, 30 feet down if you want, and they'll actually burp, and you can actually see that on the screen. And they kind of like throw up at the same time, they burp out that air, you'll see air bubbles come to the surface. And that's really good for the fish to hold them at that height, and so they can expel their gases. They, go, they release a lot easier that way. So I'm dropping back down again. There's another fish down there. See him on the bottom right-hand side. Now I'm not gonna go past them. I'm gonna stop above him always. Lake trout look up and they smell down in my opinion. And this is the way that we always, always jig. Drop down a little bit more towards him. And so I'm waiting for that fish to get engaged here. We are using spot locks, so we're using a trolling motor on the front of the boat. And the wind's actually at my right shoulder here. So we're actually GPS anchored in this area. If you don't have a GPS anchor, what you can do is called back trolling, which is run your gas motor in reverse, and you'll stop on one of those marks that you see on the screen, which is kind of like the mark that you're, you're seeing at the bottom there. Stop on it, drop down, keep your line as vertical as possible. You don't want your line scoped all the way out like that because it's really hard to set the hook because you want to set the hook at the same angle your line is. So vertical is the best. Now I was talking about eliminating water. You want to troll around. Right now this lake is set up, which has a thermocline. And it's hard to see in this mode. And we don't have any current in this area, but earlier on the lake when we were on 120, there's a lot of current. And you could actually see the thermocline on the screen. It was 
down about 45 feet. So that means the warm water's on top and the cold water's on bottom. Now sometimes lake trout won't go into that warm water. Today they're super hungry, so they don't seem to care. They'll go right past it, which is really, really good. So we wanna sit, wait, hold our jig there, five, six feet off bottom, and let those fish come to us. We can wiggle it just a little bit. Oh, I got one chasing me right now. Oh, he changed his mind. See last second, see how he dropped? Now there's three fish down there. I got another one coming up to me, screaming. We wanna run away. Oh, he missed it. He hit me and he missed it. So we wanna drop back down immediately. I'm using a bait caster. It's a little bit easier on your wrist at the end of the day. It's just a more comfortable ergonomic position. Um, but most of the time, if we're using for smaller fish, I'll use spinning gear. And I'll use like a 2,500 size reel. Oh, we got one coming up to me right now. Change his mind. And I wanna play a cat and mouse with these fish. I wanna kinda of match their speed as much as possible. And I'm staring at my screen. Now a lot of people think that's not fishing, but as far as you're concerned, like adrenaline rush wise, a lot of people fish for the adrenaline rush. This is an adrenaline rush the entire time. I'm messing with these fish. I'm playing with these fish. It's not just blind. Ooh. Got another one. That one came back for it three times. So don't always give up and like go limp. You wanna make sure that you're prepared for that fish to come back. So just keep reeling. That's another big fish. And if you have the right gear and you trust your knots, I'm using an FG knot. And a lot of times I'll use a W uni between the two, between my braid and leader small one. He just decided he wanted to take a run. It's better to have a professional netter in the boat with you. You want to unhook him with it in the net with a pair of pliers. I can't show you that angle right now, but there's another absolute beauty. This technique is so deadly, folks. Absolutely deadly. Back in he goes, under 10 seconds. Now I'll go over just the settings real quick. So I'm running LiveScope XR. We'll go over those settings real quick. That's the easiest one to do. So our gain is 70. We wanna set our height to manual. So right now we're at 100. So in our setup, appearance, color scheme is blue. It's just really, it's a really poppy color. Color gain's maxed out at 100. Go back, installation. I'm in downwards mode for those people who care. And then I have stabilization and auto. Focus is in fresh water. Noise rejection's off and TVG is off, so time varying gain. I like my unit as fast as possible. Now, if you're using 2D, which I'm gonna go into right now, you wanna run your 2D between 80 kilohertz, and I'll, I think it's kilohertz, 80 kilohertz or 200 kilohertz. 80 will shoot down, 80 will shoot down a super wide cone. So. If you wanna look at a sonar that's in the back of your boat, and a lot of them are, um, a lot of sonars are this shape these days, you wanna make sure that your sonar is parallel to the bottom or parallel to the water. So if your boat has a ride like this, you don't wanna make sure that your, when your boat is in the water with people in it, loaded full of gear, that your sonar is not doing this or this, because that cone is gonna shoot like this or like that, you'll never get a clear image. So make sure you read your manual on how to set that up properly. It's very, very crucial, especially in 100 feet of water. You wanna keep your line as vertical as possible. Uh, you wanna run between 80 and 200, so 80 foot cone, so it's an underwater ice cream cone that shoots out in all directions. And so you'll, you're shooting a big wide area at the bottom at 100 feet. 200 is a little bit a skinnier cone, usually like uh, 20 degrees is on average. Um, and you can change those depending on your unit. And a couple other, one more setting. So I have my gain set on medium. I have my scroll speed turned up to 10. So we want that as fast as possible. We want the information as fast as possible. Appearance, and then we want our A scope, which you're seeing right here on the screen. That's kind of, they call the amplitude scope. That's even faster information. That's like it typewriting as fast as possible in that bottom right hand corner. And running it on this mode instead of a flasher mode like ice fishing, 
will give you more information on how that fish is reacting to your bait. So that's super crucial. So hope you guys learned something. Uh, 80 between 200 and you need to really mess with your gain and your color gain and your interference depending if you have boats around you which is not normally an issue with lake trout jigging but sometimes it is. It all depends on your unit and if you want to google how do I get my hummingbird dialed into deep water jigging you'll find videos online on how to do that or your Garmin or other units but I can't really show you on this unit because it's, it's not acting as a normal 2D transducer. So if you want to find something useful in this video make sure you leave a comment below on how you liked it. Give it a thumbs up. And if you want to support uh, more videos like this, make sure you visit BenditFishing.com.pe.site and buy some baits that we used here in the video. Thanks for watching.